scripture this morning, Jesus shares an important insight into how we can experience real life. Here are these words from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, beginning with the 15th verse. Then he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself, but is not rich toward God. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Holy God, we pause for a moment just to set our sights on you. In the midst of all our blessings and all our amazing lives, we, we recognize you as the giver of every good and perfect gift. Lord, as we seek to go deeper in your word this day, we ask that you would just uh, open our hearts and our minds, that we might be fully available to you in whatever you might say. Lord, hide me that you might show through. Let my words be your words, not for my sake, but for the sake of the kingdom. These things we pray in your Son, Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Well, we're back speaking on the seven deadly sins. We handled four of them, and then we had some things like graduation and, and those kind of things come up. So we, we took a kind of a, a hiatus, but we're back. Uh, and today we're going to be speaking on greed. Uh, I really enjoyed this, this opportunity. It, it's kind of funny to speak on greed on, on Pentecost Sunday, which is what today is. But I think it'll work out in the end. God has a way of, of bringing together those situations and subjects that, that seem to meet us right where we are. And if we listen, we'll hear God's grace and find some open doors that might invite us to, into an even greater life. Well, as I begin speaking on greed this day, once again, I want to speak on my family. Uh, the boys are at camp, so they can't really say anything about this, but I think they'll, they'll agree with this story. Uh, growing up in a house full of boys, our, our house became a place of rough and tumble relationships. I mean, any time we'd get together, it seemed like sometime by the end of the night would, would have us all in a pile. There on the floor, with me on top. My size, my strength, my overall toughness would, would keep them gathered around and I, I could just boldly proclaim... <sighs> Dad is king. Right? Y'all know how it is? But as time went on, that got to be less and less possible. As they grew, I, I find myself drawing back from that. And, and I, I had great pleasure. If I could ever just get on top for a second before they pulled me down to the bottom, I could also say, well, I was on top that one time. Remember, I'm still bad. <laughs> well, those things happened until a trip we took in October of 08. Uh, a vacation to my hometown and and we were there in a shallow river near my hometown of Loosedale, Mississippi and and there I once again decided to proclaim my superiority you know and, and the boys were were 15 and 17 and, and at that age they they, they, they they loved the challenge of up showing their dad so they were up to the challenge that day so as I declared my superiority they met me at the center of the river ready to rumble well it didn't take long for them to declare victory because one thing I, I came to understand there in that shallow river 
anytime you're on bottom, underwater is far too long. <laughs> You see, God made this world with all this wonderful stuff we call oxygen. And what we do each and every day is we, we breathe in and we breathe out. If you've forgotten just how wonderful it is to have that, that opportunity to breathe in, just quit doing it for a while. See what your life is like. In your bulletin, you'll find uh, in the, on the front of the green sheet a little point to ponder. And I'd like to call your attention to that. And, and our first point to ponder is, is this great truth. A failure to inhale is fatal. And I think we'd all agree with that. A failure to inhale is fatal. But, but have you ever thought about this? So is the failure to exhale. We breathe in that which we need to feed our physical needs and we, then we contract our lungs and we release into the atmosphere that which we don't need to make more space for that which we do. But, but even more importantly, that so that we might feed the world around us. As we breathe in oxygen, we breathe out carbon dioxide, something that we don't use, but something that the plants, the trees and the shrubs need that is vital to their survival as well. This breathing motion is, is vital to the health of our physical bodies, but, but it's also pretty important to the, the, the relationships we have, and, and especially the world in which we live. If you think about it and look around us, it, it's pretty amazing the extent to which God has, has provided us blessings and, and things that make life not only possible, but, but good. Just imagine what our life would be like without a home to shelter us from, from the outside elements. Or what would it be like if we didn't have cars that allowed us to move around and do those things that we needed to do each and every day? Or how about the extras, like money and hobbies, interests, achievements? What would our life be like without those? I mean, and this is your second point to ponder, God provided the world around us as a means to our happiness. God provided the world around us as a means to our happiness. But when we make the created order, those things that we have, those things that we, we seek to, to control and, and obtain, when we make the created order into an end, an idol requiring our devotion, then we slipped into a form of hell called greed. Now for some... They may disagree with that statement and think that I'm going way overboard in saying it. There's some of us that have a much different understanding of greed. It's become probably the most socially accepted of the seven deadly sins. In fact, many have, have adopted the same view that, that Michael Douglas had as he played the role of Gordon Gecko, a Wall Street executive, when he proclaimed, greed is not only good, but it works. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, that greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Greed is right. Greed works. Greed clarifies, cuts through, and captures the essence of the evolutionary spirit. Greed in all of its forms. Greed for life, for money, for love, knowledge has marked the upward surge of mankind and greed, you mark my words, will not only save Teldar paper, but that other malfunctioning corporation called the USA. Thank you very much. You know, in all honesty, that is, a, is an idea that we have gotten lodged in our head. Because greed does provide some upsides and benefits to the casual observer, but, but if you think about it, that part that drives us to do our best, if we're not careful, allows our desires to get the best of us. Bringing out the worst in us. Father Andrew Greeley wrote in the Chicago Sun-Times these words, The most serious spiritual problem in our country today is greed. Reckless, untrammeled greed. I personally identify more with the old Ro Roman proverb that goes like this, money is like seawater. The more you drink, the thirstier you get. 
that thought best describes the impact that greed has on our lives. It may well have, have driven Jesus to share these words. Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. It can be hard to see, but, but if we think about it, greed has its insidious nature because it, it can look so much like us at our best. And yet, in the end, it keeps us from be, being able to, to live in the present and always has us looking to the future. In the New Testament, there were two words that described life. The first was called bios. And bios spoke of the biological life. The life that we have physically. The life of plants and animals. The other was zoe. Now this kind of life referred to a much deeper understanding of life. It, it was not, not just our breath or our heartbeat, but, but it was our soul life. The, the life that God breathed into us. And this Zoe, it's this Zoe understanding of life that, that Jesus referred to as he told us life doesn't consist in the abundance of our possessions. And then he went on to share the parable about the foolish farmer who experienced such great fortune that, that he was faced with the dilemma, dilemma of what to do with all that he had. But have you noticed who he consulted when he looked for advice? I love the way the message translation of the Bible puts it. He talked to himself. Then he said, here's what I'll do. I'll gather all my grain and goods and I'll say to myself, Self, you've done well. You've got it made and can retire. Take it easy and have the time of your life. You see, in this farmer's mind, he believed that his worldly fortune would, would allow him to, to live a life filled with all the worldly pleasures he could have. All he had to do was expand his storage bins and sit back and enjoy the, the worldly life or the bios that was to come. But remember, there is, there is a rhythm in our life. And a failure to exhale, exhale is just as deadly as a failure to inhale. Most of us, if we think about it, can, can relate to, to what Jesus is saying. We, we never set out to be greedy, but, but before we, we know it, we find ourselves so trapped in, in planning for the future that we, we can't live or, or make a difference in the present. We find ourselves saying things like, someday I'll spend more time with my family. Or someday I'll really get involved in church and, and, and let God into my heart. Someday I'll find a Sunday schooler. Someday I'll use my gifts and grace for, for something worthwhile. Someday I'll actually give to God what I feel like God is calling me to give. That's what we find ourselves saying. And, and then later we find ourselves asking, well, what happened to the kids? Or what happened to my relationship with my wife or my friends? Or I can't understand why this world is in the mess that it's in. You see, as much as we'd like to believe that we can reach that point of bliss, of worldly satisfaction by, by simply continuing to accumulate stuff... We'll never find the real life that God offers. You see, greed never lets us enjoy what we've got, but always drives us to want more. And here's something else to think about. Excess was, was not given for us to hoard, but so that we might become generous, extravagant givers just like God. See, that's where, that's where true life is found, experienced, and shared. You know, thinking about this weekend, it's, it's somewhat amazing that things have come together in the way that they have. 
for me to have the opportunity to, to speak on, on greed this day. When we also celebrate two events that, that speak of the greatest gift our generations have ever known. He gives us a couple of a pretty big object lessons. You see this Memorial Day in remembering and honoring those who have given their very lives so that we might have health, safety, and freedom. We see just how blessed our lives are. And understand that our lives are what they are because others were willing to give for us. As we celebrate Pentecost, we remember that just as, as God breathed into Adam, that pile of dust, it is Jesus breathed on His disciples and invited them to receive the Holy Spirit. We too are, are called to breathe. To inhale and exhale. Our blessings. Our possessions. Our, our struggles. Our, our brokenness. And as we do, we, we not only receive, but also share. God's life-giving breath. Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you so much for... Even the basics of life. The things that we, we take so for granted. The world in which we stand, live, and exist. The air that, that we breathe in and breathe out. The beauty that lines our journey to and from our destinations each day. And Lord, we, we ask that you would help us to recognize the part we're asked to play in making this world all you have hoped it would be. Lord, help us to be givers. Help us to be lovers. Help us to be those who make life good for others. Help us to be Christ-like. And all that we do. These things we ask in your son's holy and precious name. Amen. <laughs>